Welcome, explorers. I hope you're all ready to delve into history, because we are traveling back in time to the Chalcolithic era in Northern Europe. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the corded ware culture of ancient Europe, a culture that helped deliver Indo-European languages to Europe and played a major role in shaping the cultures of Central and Northern Europe for thousands of years after their disappearance. So strap into your time machines as we go back in time to learn all about the corded ware culture. The first important thing to know about the corded ware culture is that it was not a unified nation or culture but instead a series of settlements that all produced similar material remains, displaying shared trends in art and artifact production. Cordonware sites at the height of its influence in world history ranged from Switzerland to Sweden, and from the Netherlands to Belarus and beyond. Let's take a closer look at the geography of the corded ware culture and learn more about how it managed to make such an impact on European history. There is intense debate among historians over the origin of the corded ware culture, with some citing it as a people derived from the homeland of the speakers of the language which founded the Indo-European language family. However, other archaeologists suggest the people who made up the corded ware culture derived from Central Europe and simply adopted the linguistic practices of the expanding Indo-European languages. Those who argue an Indo-European origin cite the evidence of horsemanship and war chariots to back a rapid military conquest of Central Europe. And there is evidence of at least one large-scale pitched battle in Bronze Age Germany that may back this theory. However, this theory rests on the idea that the people who made up the corded ware culture derived from the Yamnaya culture of Central Asia, and genetic studies show males of the corded ware culture have vastly different genetics from those of the Yamnaya. Radiocarbon dating of ceramic artifacts has made locating the exact origin difficult too. But most ceramic evidence from the oldest known ceramics the corded ware culture produced points to either a German or Polish origin. As we mentioned earlier, the corded ware culture consisted of several different settlements with their own unique identities. Major subcultures of the corded ware sphere of influence included the Middle Dnieper culture of northern Ukraine and western Russia, the Fyanovo Balanovo culture of Belarus and western Russia, the Schnukaramic culture of Germany and Poland, the single grave culture of northern Germany, southern Scandinavia and the Netherlands, the Scandinavian battle axe culture, which sounds just awesome, of central Scandinavia, and the just as awesome Finnish battle axe culture of southern Finland and the Baltic. Archaeologists for a long time believed the corded ware culture was a pastoralist, semi-nomadic culture because of how difficult it was trying to locate corded ware settlements. But recent finds have managed to detail agricultural settlements which produced wheat and barley. There is also evidence of wheeled vehicles which would likely have been oxen leading from the yoke. There's even evidence of dairy production at corded ware sites in the Alps, as well as sheep, likely raised for wool, thanks to influence from the Mediterranean cultures to their south. Corded ware cultures south of Scandinavia have the strange common trend where men were buried on their right side and women buried on their left side, with both having their faces turned towards the south. In Scandinavia, however, the gender roles were reversed, and they were both buried facing east instead. Men were also frequently buried with battle axes, likely displaying their role as warriors in life. Even more interesting is a recent find outside of Prague in the Czech Republic 
of a biological male who was buried on his left side as if he was a woman and contained no gender-specific grave finds, causing many historians and archaeologists to speculate that the grave may show evidence of a transgender individual from the Corded Ware culture. However, due to the age of the find, it is difficult to genetically prove the biological sex of the individual, so it may simply be a cisgendered woman. Whether the Corded Ware culture derives from Proto-Indo-European language-speaking people or not may still be a hot topic among archaeologists and historians today. But what is known is the culture played a major role in introducing the Indo-European language family into Central Europe. Specifically, linguists believe the Corded Ware culture may have spoken a language ancestral to Germanic, Baltic, and Slavic languages of today. That shift didn't happen overnight, though. Linguists believe the Yamnaya did dominate the linguistic landscape of the region by moving into Central Europe as pastoralists in such great numbers that their nomadic language overpopulated the languages of sedentary natives, which may explain why the language took hold even when the genetics of the Yamnaya did not. There are even clues to support this theory and the existence of pre-Indo-European words among Germanic languages today. Speaking of genetics, the vast majority of corded ware males do not share genetic similarities to those of the Yamnaya based on a 2019 genetic study looking at Y chromosome genes. The study found that most corded ware males had an R1A gene as opposed to the R1B M269 gene common among the Yamnaya. Some archaeologists, however, believe both of these genes may derive from Central Asia and that both may have come from the Yamnaya. In fact, an earlier study in 2015 found that corded ware males in Germany showed a 75% genetic match to those of the Yamnaya culture. In fact, modern Central Europeans share a 20 to 30% genetic match to the Yamnaya, so it is a fairly compelling argument. This evidence suggests there may have been a subculture of or predating the Yamnaya that migrated into Central Europe before a second, larger wave that would have delivered the dominance of Indo-European languages. In fact, the genetics of the Corded Ware culture most closely resemble those of the earlier Central European beaker culture, based on the evidence of lactose tolerance, which the Yamnaya did not have, and the evidence of dairy production in alpine Corded Ware settlements likely supports a beaker culture origin. Regardless of their origin, the Corded Ware culture would splinter and evolve into several other cultures. These included the Andronovo culture of southwest Russia, the Potapovka culture of western Russia, the Srumnaya of Ukraine and southwest Russia, and the Sintashta of Central Asia. Linguistically, the Corded Ware introduced Indo-European languages into Europe and several European languages today, derive from the Corded Ware speakers.